this? Like the, another one. Not that one, one, just this one. Yeah. Okay. If you want to go right back to when I was young, I think that's when it started. But I was I was on a coach going somewhere through London, and I had a window seat. And we stopped at a, a bus stop, and I looked outside, and I saw the scene that I, I just couldn't believe. It, there was a, a man um, bleeding. He was obviously homeless. He was staggering and falling, staggering and falling, and everybody around him was ignoring him. There was a queue of people at the bus stop, they just literally looked the other way. And I, d I just, I just uh, it affected me so much that I, I just never forgot it. And I kind of promised myself and promised the universe that one day, I, you know, I'll do something to do with help, you know, helping homeless people or, or helping people in need. <coughs> right, you've got some um, mushrooms, okay. oranges, peppers, a few cherry tomatoes, a couple of lemons, a bit of cabbage. Um, some the reason why I help Annette is because some of the fruit and veg that I get after time looks a bit tired, um, cannot be sold. So rather than just throw it uh, away uh, and be wasted, it's nice to be able to pass it on to Annette so she can feed the homeless. When it first, when it first opened, um, when it first started, um, so I've been coming ever since. They've made me a cake. Yeah, and I'm 50 today. <laughs> It's not just giving food, it's, uh, it's a place, a community place where people are just sort of letting, well they, they, they relax, they, they let go and, and, and they share. I mean it's not always nice and sweet, <laughs> there's a, a lot of fighting, <laughs> not physical fighting but verbal, it can be quite hard. Um, and in recent months we've had people, um, you know, drinking on the side, you know, like with a bottle at the, on, under the table and they're obviously taking some drugs um, and there's always a risk of closure because we've, you know, we've actually upset a lot of people. <laughs> it might be the neighbours, it might be, uh, you know, the shops, the restaurant down the road and I've spoken to a few, um, like, people like the supermarket, people, you know, the owners of the shops and house and they said, yeah, you've brought down the street, you've made it a little bit more shabby, yeah, because we've got homeless people, you know, literally hanging out every corner, drinking and throwing their cans around, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, well, I'm sorry, but, you know, I still feel it's important, I still think I have to do this. Hello. Hello. Nice, very nice. I spend an awful lot of the time on my own and uh, to be able to come in here and to meet volunteers that are as um, sort of friendly and t towards you and um, to be able to sort of contact the rest of the human race for a little while is um, sort of encouraging really and it helps me to um, deal with life a little bit better. This, this facility is a terrific facility for people um, on the streets of Watford and disadvantaged. And I, I just hope that because it's free, that uh, the people that use it, like myself and others, really appreciate it. Can I get you a cup of tea or anything? I'd love a coffee. A coffee, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's a better amount, isn't it? Yeah, it's it would be devastating if it closed, yeah, because I find it a source of inspiration and uh, getting your confidence back. I'd be devastated. 
Well, what gives me confidence is there's always other outlets. If you wait around in Watford, like in localities for long enough, something else will crop up. But it's heartbreak to think that things would close down because of people who are being antisocial. You know. Yes, well, I started doing art workshops at the cafe. It was a kind of therapy to, to, to take the stress away from their lives, just something different, just to come into themselves and to open up creatively. So um, I started doing some art and just to see what happened. Sometimes it was quite like very dark images. So I've got to introduce things like flower painting, <laughs> some techniques that they're not used to, and uh, actually some, you know, have really uh, blossomed and opened up. <laughs> and then, I like, I like scrub, you know, like stuff that just lay in the foreground. Then I might want to get a bit of water and just uh, fill in that bush a bit. See that? I might just fill it in. Right. Yeah. Dots, maybe. Yeah, so um, I was not eating enough greens to help my diet and uh, I wasn't socialising enough. So I've come out to socialise with people. And, um, luckily, they do this sort of thing here, which is what I was missing. Because this is what I used to do all day with people. But Warren has calmed, calmed down, he's less nervous. Um, I mean, he's not truly homeless, I believe. I don't know where he lives. It's, he hasn't got proper water. It, does, it is not a nice place wherever he stays. Um, and he really, really enjoys coming on a Monday and spending time there. And he's so much more relaxed. Uh, I'm very excited about, about developing his art, which is, which is there. It just needs to be tapped into and he is doing it. It's fantastic to see. I'm just observing life. Who won me? So I'm a bit of a like, observer and a viewer of them working out of what is happening while everybody else is running around. <laughs> and it's still going on. It's, it's not going to close at the moment. Um, if it does, I will continue in a different way. I would do the same. I'll just go on the streets and give the food out in the streets under bridges or wherever or would it in you know where where people do collect especially the homeless yeah that would be my key, my key concern is to help the homeless where they camp out in the park and uh, hidden away you know but that, there's a lot of people out there who are just wandering around they're just um, they've got nobody they're lonely they're lost frightened it's a really scary place being on the streets. Five candles from there. She's got 75. I'll go 74.